So if you just recently got your hands on a brand new iPhone SE 3, third generation, release in 2022, I'm going to go ahead and show you a handful of awesome tips and tricks and some cool features that this Touch ID iPhone can do. We're going to go ahead and cover all the most used ones and some very interesting ones specifically for just this device. So let's go ahead and quickly get started. So one of the cool highlights about this iPhone SE is that it now officially supports 5G. Now the type of 5G is different than ones you find on the most expensive iPhones like the 13 Pro and such. Now sub 6 5G is what this phone is equipped with. And to give you a quick rundown, the iPhone 13 Pro, they have millimeter wave 5G. But the sub 6 one isn't bad either as it still will perform better than LTE. And then if you want to go fiddle with the 5G settings, if you go into settings, go into your cellular and in, in the cellular data option, tap on voice and data right here is where you can select LTE if you want to leave the voice data to be strictly on LTE, you can do that or just leave it auto, which is what I personally recommend. Now this device still has touch ID. So for the next tip, I highly recommend going into your settings and go into touch ID and passcode. In here, enter your pin to get access to this. Go ahead and scroll down and click on add fingers and you can register up to five. You can register up to five fingers. So I like to register some that I like to actually be able to unlock my device if I rest it on a flat surface. I'll register that convenient finger that I primarily use, but you can register other users to fingers. So if you want to have your significant other to also have quick access to your device, you can easily register their finger here as well, or your kid even. Anybody you really want to trust. Now if you're reversing back from a Face ID phone to Touch ID, by swiping from the bottom to the top, this will give you quick access to your control center. This is where you can find other information like your screen brightness by simply tapping and holding. This gives you these abilities right here to quickly toggle night shift and such. And if you toggle it for the first time, you can actually create a custom schedule right here in the settings or you can leave it by auto as well. It will automatically turn off and you can adjust the dim brightness here. You also have quick access to true tone as well right here. And then if you have a supported device with transparency mode, active noise cancellation, you can long press on the volume rocker and you have the ability to switch between the three different modes right here instead of having to physically touch on the headset. And here's where you can actually enable or disable spatial audio as well. Now if you launch Safari, if this is your first time using Safari, you may have noticed that the search bar, search bar is down here. If you like to reverse back to the old way, how it previously was on iOS, you could easily do so by going into the settings, scroll down to where you see Safari, and then if you scroll down, you can actually quickly switch from bottom to top right here. If you relaunch it, boom it's reversed back to how it used to be. Now the iPhone SE 3 got a significant upgrade to its rear camera as there's a lot of awesome features that it now has and cool capabilities. So if you launch it, you're gonna first be greeted photography style. This is a new feature that's only innovated on supported cameras for iPhones. And what basically this allows you to do is to go through the many different presettings that you can have this device be presetted at. So if you like more contrast, you can go through the different styles that it has, select this, and that is gonna be the saved settings for your camera. You can always readjust it too. So if you don't like the presettings that you selected, you can always go hop back in your settings, just scroll until you find the, the camera section. And then from here, just scroll down and you'll see styles. And here you can actually select and go back to some of them. I personally prefer leaving it on standard though. Now by double tapping the home button, this will actually launch App Switcher. So you can actually go back to previously opened apps right here. Now on top of here, this little arrow, this will actually unlock different settings you can adjust quickly on the camera app. So you got access to your flash, your exposure level, you can adjust the exposure level right here. You have the ability to switch between the front facing camera and the rear facing camera right here as well. You got your flash settings here. In addition to that, live photos. You're able to add a three second timer if you like. And if you long press on the shutter button, you could actually begin recording a video instantly. Just like so, and yes, you could actually zoom in by pinching and zooming like you would on a social media platform. And if you move it all the way to the right and lock it in like this, it'll actually continue recording and you could still take photos by hitting the other shutter button and then just end it like so. Then of course you can manually switch between video modes by simply tapping here and on top here you'll find the resolution settings as well as the FPS. You can adjust all this right here instead of having to go into settings. Slow motion, you'll notice it will have it will give you the ability to record up to 240 FPS, which is nice. Time lapse, 
only on time lapse you can only ex adjust the exposure it doesn't really give you that much options and if you keep scrolling you can find the portrait which unlocks like mini studio camera capabilities so you have all these different styles to choose from and of course you find last but not least you have pano mode now this device does not have apple wallet set up but I'm going to be using my other device that does because if you want to readjust the default card to automatically pop up by simply long pressing and moving the card like so, you can easily adjust the order just like this. Now when you take a photo or even you, the camera app in general, you actually can capture live text. And the cool thing about this, whenever you take a photo in our case, if you long press on the text once you go back in your camera roll, you can actually copy that text and paste it somewhere else. This is a new innovation that was recently added and works extremely well even on the budget version iPhone SE. Now if you go into your settings however, if you actually go into the camera section and then you scroll down, you have the freedom to adjust a couple of things to your own personal preference like the show text. You can actually disable this feature if this becomes annoying whenever you're taking photos. You can do the exact same thing with the QR code. But use volume up for bursts. What this basically does when you enable this free feature, if you launch the camera app and you actually hold down on the volume, no, hold up on the volume rocker, my bad, it will actually do a photo burst like this. It's kind of nifty. Get some cool shots by doing this effect i like to personally have this enabled and on format i highly recommend leaving it on high efficiently efficiency especially if all you own is apple products but if you have a windows computer and you want to make it compatible put it on most compatible so there's no importing issues whenever you're uploading your photos now this being a home button device there actually is a couple cool things that this touch id can do if you go into the settings and go into accessibility if you scroll into the home button here you can actually change the speed if you want it to be less responsive you can switch to the slower slowest and also you have the ability to switch from siri the classic voices control or just have it off in general if you long press but in addition to that if we go back if you actually go into accessibility shortcuts whenever you select one of these modes you can select a bunch of them too so right here I have two of them selected by triple tapping. This gives me the freedom to quickly enable classic invert. Basically it's like inverted colors. And by simply triple pressing again, it gives you ability for this menu to pop up and disable it if you don't like it. Not a cool, the most useful ones in my opinion is basically the, these. Magnified will basically launch the camera app that allows you to quickly have access to the zoom slider so you can quickly read text from afar. And then the reduce white point this will make it so that the display gets even dimmer so if you bring up the control center and you lower the brightness all the way to the very bottom this will increase the battery life but also makes it difficult for others to view your screen you could quickly disable it and turn it on like by triple tapping the home button as you can see right here it's a massive difference in terms of brightness those are the two most useful ones and in the control center typing the little arrow airplay icon you have access to audio sharing so with a supported device you can listen to audio with two pair of airpods or even beats now if the auto brightness detection becomes annoying by going into the settings go into display and brightness right here here's where you have the ability to have the light mode and dark mode enabled and switch automatically by creating a custom schedule or allow it to do the sunrise and sunset but down here in the true tone this is where you can also go ahead and disable this but if you're at hard as seeing or reading i should say you can actually adjust the text size right here other cool things you could do here is if we go back you could actually disable the raise to wake if you don't like this ability let's say for example you have this turned off and if we lock our device and we wake it up the screen is not going to turn on until we actually physically touch the home button if you don't like this you can actually enable this and now whenever you raise the device wait a couple of seconds the screen will automatically detect that and it will wake itself up so you quickly see their notifications as well as the time and of course you have the ability to adjust the auto lock never if you want you could adjust the timer right here and then right here you could also enable bolder text if you need it but if that's not enough you can always go back into accessibilities and go into display and text size you're able to enable labels so you can see which one's on and off and i'll show like little icons here but also here larger text you could actually enable it even more so if you need the largest of the large text 
This is where you can actually go ahead and make it even larger if you need, if needed. Now the control center is where you also find all the other shortcuts. You could actually add some really useful ones like stream record by going into your settings and just scroll until you see control center, customize control center right here. And here just add the ones you want to add. So I personally prefer add announcements, low battery, screen recording, and that's basically it. You can readjust it or add more if you like. Uh, dark mode, you don't really need dark mode because you can always just adjust uh, display brightness by long pressing. But here is where those shortcuts are. You can quickly have access to them right here, including low power mode and such, and announce messages. And yeah, here's the dark mode. But again, you don't really need this because you can always just do it this way instead. So you can free up some space this way. And then as you see here, by quickly swiping down on the home button, this will actually bring the top part down so you have access to the top part. So you can easily just use your finger to navigate on the top in case you're having a hard time reaching the upper part of the screen. Just swipe down with your uh, finger and this will bring it down like so. And if you long press, this will enable wiggle mode. Here, yes, you do have the ability to add widgets. You can add all the widgets that you like on your main device. Everything here is just fully supported. And if you tap the little lines, dots right here, you can actually hide some of these from your homepage. So by uncheck marking it like so, I only have one homepage, even though I had a two, a second one as you previously saw. And by check marking it once more, I also have the ability to remove it all entirely. But by check marking it back, you'll see that I have both of them on my homepage once more. And if I don't like some of these apps, don't want them to show, I can always just remove it only on the homepage instead of deleting the app entirely. And I can always go back and view that deleted, that removed app on the app library right here. All your installed apps will be located on the app library, but you could take them out of your homepage to free up some space and clutter. Then if you have an Apple TV supported device or Apple TV in general, you can always launch the remote right here and switch between and connect between those different devices right here. The control layout is very similar to the Apple TV controller. So if you lose the remote or having a hard time finding it, just launch the controller app on your iPhone. You can control that device this way. Now when listening to music, if you actually launch a setting app, and you actually scroll down to music, that was weird. If you scroll down to the music section right here, you can actually quickly preview a bunch of these EQ setting preferences. So if you wanna, you can actually listen through them as you switch between the different EQs right here or just have it off in general. Also, I highly recommend having sound check enabled this way. Whenever a hard rock song comes in to play, followed by a jazz song. It's not gonna be a, a rough transition. It's gonna be smooth so it doesn't just catch you by surprise. So that's what Soundcheck does. Now, pro tip, this is the brand new iPhone SE. So you have access to an exclusive wallpaper. So if you go into the wallpaper settings and you scroll all the way down, these are the new third generation iPhone SE's wallpapers. For some reason, these are disabled by default. So if you'd like to know where you can find them, this is where you actually go in. And yes, they do support light mode and dark mode. And I gotta say, they look fantastic. Now, if we go back in our settings and go into battery, I highly recommend enabling show battery life percentage. The, you have so much space up here. It's This is disabled by default, but you can actually monitor your battery life percentage right here instead of having it on the control center. Then you can also see here, you can also monitor the battery health of your Apple device, your iPhone. If you just bought this, it better be at 100%. If it's not, and it's brand new, go back and return it back to the retail store where you got it from. Uh, it has to be at 100, especially if it's a brand new device like this one. So we're good. I also highly recommend leaving uh, optimized battery life charging, especially if you upgrade the power adapter to charge your device for the fast charging support. Now turn off the device by long pressing the power button. Basically will give you access to the turn off switch right here. But if you want to enable SOS, what you need to do is go into the settings, go into emergency SOS. Go ahead and enable call with five press. When this is enabled, by simply pressing the power button five times, this will automatically start a five second timer and will get a hold of emergency dispatchers as well as the people you have selected in your emergency contacts. The other method is not the timer, but if you actually hold down the volume rocker on top and the power button, you could have also have access to the emergency slider right here as well as access to the medical ID if you haven't yet set that up. All in all, there we have it. That is a handful of unique things you can do with the brand new iPhone SE and some settings I highly recommend enabling, especially if you just picked up this device for the first time. 
If you want my honest opinion, a quick review of this device, it's nice. It's not a bad body. I know this body has been out for quite a while now. It's a really old, outdated look, but in reality, it's much thinner and it's literally everything that the average user will ever need. The single camera is absolutely amazing. The screen still looks gorgeous and bright and still gets excellent battery. And it's also equipped with a very powerful chipset from Apple. So it's a very capable device with many different shortcuts and software integrations that many phones around this price tag don't really have, especially for the performance that this iPhone SE has. And yes, it does have support for live listening as well as uh, white noise. So you can enable this like right by doing this. So here we have the ability to actually change background noise from rain, ocean and such. And if you have a supported headphone, you can actually enable live listening here as well. So it has those features still on this device. So all in all, not a bad phone, but now you are informed in terms of all the cool things that the iPhone SE 3 has to offer. If you got some good useful information out of this video, you know what to do. I'll greatly appreciate if you actually leave this video a like as those help me out a lot. And get subscribed, especially if you enjoy a lot of tech videos just like this. If you'd like to catch me live, I do stream on the weekends on Twitch. I'm gonna start this weekend because last week I was on vacation. I'm back now. I'm gonna go back to my gaming habits and just enjoy things with the community. So come hang out and say hi. If you'd like to watch more, I do cover other Apple products like the Apple Watch. Here I review both of the two generation Apple Watches, the Series 7 and the SE, and I make a side-by-side -side comparison video. So if you are debating between those two watches, that's available for you to watch. And in that video over there, that is a video that YouTube is recommending specifically for you. Let me know in the comment section if YouTube is right or not. Again, thanks so much for watching. Take care, and I'll catch you all in the next one. See ya.